So, you're starting university this autumn. First of all, a big congratulations. You've survived UK's personal statements, interviews, and hopefully you have avoided burnout along the way. But here's the thing, university isn't just about the lectures and exams. It's about independence, it's about resilience, and learning how to survive on instant noodles without developing Selby. I studied mathematics at Oxford and after four years of tutorials, problem sheets and the occasional existential crisis, I came away with a degree and also a lot of lessons that I wish someone had told me when I first started. So today I'm going to share with you everything that I have learned, the practical stuff, the academic strategies and the reality check to help you hit the ground running this autumn. So let's start with the big one, academics. At school, I'm sure you've used the teachers guiding you pretty much every step of the way. Well, at university, suddenly you're expected to be your own project manager, I want to say. Nobody's really going to chase you to do the reading. Actually, I would even say that nobody cares if you are two weeks behind on problem set, except you, when exams come around. What would my biggest tip be here? Honestly, consistency beats cramming. A single hour of focused work every day adds up way more than a last minute all-nighter. University isn't a sprint, it's a marathon with deadlines strategically placed to ruin your social life, but also if you keep up with them, you'll find that it's actually way easier to study step by step rather than all at once at the end right before your exam. Also, and I really, really wish that I would have known about this earlier, I would have done more of as well, asking for help is not a weakness. Not at all. Lecturers, tutors, peers, use them. University isn't about proving that you can suffer in silence. It is about learning and it's also about learning how to learn. And yes, that sometimes looks like just walking into your tutor's office and saying, I spent three hours staring at this integral and it still hates me. They will understand. I remember during my very first term at Oxford, I was convinced everyone else understood literally everything instantly. Spoiler, they did not. During one of my very early tutorials, I actually brought in a problem sheet that looked like it was kind of attacked by a flock of pigeons or something, you know, smudges, scribbles, and pretty much half erased algebra everywhere around the page. But my tutor took one look and said, good, it means that you're thinking about the problem. And I would say that that completely changed the way I approach learning. So it's not about having the cleaner solutions, it's about wrestling with the ideas until they finally click. And to be honest, some of my most productive study sessions happen when I force myself to go to the library for just 20 minutes, saying I will get out of there in 20 minutes and then accidentally stayed for three hours because I finally got into the flow and I just could not stop. And I would say if there's something to take away from this, it is that that is the mindset that you want. Small starts lead to really big progress. And speaking of intellectual curiosity, this video is very, very kindly sponsored by Curiosity Box. And if you're someone who loves learning just for the fun of it, which if you're watching this video, I suspect you are, you're going to love this. The Fall Box is genuinely one of their most creative ones yet. Inside you get everything from Mr. Wiggles, Goofy, Giggle, Jiggle, Siphons. Yes, that's their actual name. Two self-starting siphons that can move liquid from one place to another and double as straws, by the way. To a four-dimensional tape measure, which is the first one in history that can measure space and time. You also get Ink's practical slap bracelets. One's a ruler, another helps you find the diameter of a cylinder, and the third one proves that you're actually from the future. Honestly, there's such a mix of science and silliness that I laughed out loud just opening the box. And because Curiosity Box is all about exploring science from every angle, the box also includes a Types of Time Travel t-shirt that maps out different kinds of time travel from your favorite movies and books, plus a gorgeous animal architecture photo book showing the incredible structures animals build in the wild. It's nerdy, it's beautiful, and just the right amount of chaotic, basically like a fresher's week, but for your brain. I would say that it is the perfect box to reignite your sense of wonder, whether you're knee deep in your problem sheets, or you just want something that makes you feel like a kid scientist once again. So if that sounds just like your thing, it definitely is mine, you can get 25% off your first box with the code Yuana25 at curiositybox.com slash Roman. You also have the link down in the description below. And trust me, if you're someone who really likes clever, slightly absurd, sciencey stuff, you're absolutely going to love this one. And thanks a lot to Curiosity Box for sponsoring this video. Okay, on to independence. You're now living away from home, which means learning three key skills. Cooking, 
cleaning and convincing yourself that you do not need a nap at 3 p.m. Here is what I learned pretty much the hard way. Budgeting really matters. Your allowance or your student loan or anything looks absolutely huge on day one and mysteriously vanishes in thin air by week four if you're not careful. Food is fuel. Yes, you can definitely live on instant ramen, don't get me wrong, but you will regret it around exam season when your brain is literally begging for nutrients. And I have learned this the very, very hard way, so please do not make the same mistake. And lastly, sleep is underrated. Freshers week will definitely tempt you into 3 a.m. bedtimes pretty constantly. But if you keep that up during term, you'll burn out faster than a dodgy graphics card. University life can indeed be very chaotic. The trick is balancing freedom with responsibility. You don't need to become a monk or anything, but you also do not need to join every society just because the Freshers' Fair gave you a free slice of pizza. I think here my personal record was signing up for like 14 societies in one afternoon. Did I attend a single meeting of the Ultimate Frisbee Club? Absolutely not. Do I get emails five years later? Yes. Yes, I do. Now for real, there's something empowering about getting into a rhythm, doing your laundry on Sundays, meal prepping for the week, and figuring out that, you know, adding a bit of spinach to literally any meal makes you feel like you have your life together. I would say that the sooner you get comfortable managing yourself, the more freedom you're gonna have to actually enjoy university life rather than just survive it. Now let's talk about social life. For some people, university is where they meet lifelong friends. For others, it's where they learn that housemates who don't do their dishes should be considered a form of psychological torture. Here's my advice. Say yes more often than you say no, especially in the beginning. Go to the pub quiz, join that random society, show up to the very weird themed bop or college party. You never know which of these experiences will turn into your best memory. But, and this is probably the most important bit, don't compare your experiences to everyone else's. Social media will make it look like everyone else is having the absolute time of their life, when in reality a lot of people are lonely, they're homesick, or they're just struggling to adjust. And that is completely normal. Your university community is most likely really huge, and somewhere in there, there are people who get you. Finding that just takes time, so be very patient with yourself. Also, definitely do not underestimate how comforting a regular routine can be socially. The same coffee shop every morning, the same spot in the library, or even that one seminar group where you always end up chatting a bit after class. Those little tiny patterns become the backbone of your university friendship. <laughs> Back to academics for a second, because if you're doing a subject like maths, engineering, or computer science, it is bound to be intense. Here's what saved me. One, problem sheets are practice, not punishment at all. So don't aim for perfection, always aim for progress and show your way of thinking. Two, use active learning. There's no secret on this channel how much I advocate for this. Teaching a concept to someone else or even to yourself is often the fastest way to realize where you have gaps in your knowledge or that you don't understand yourself actually. And definitely do start early because future you is gonna thank you when the deadlines start piling up. I do have loads of videos on my channel about how I study for exams, how I take notes and everything on this topic, so do check them out if you want to learn more about learning how to learn. And most importantly, I want to say, do remember that your degree is not your identity. A bad mark on a problem sheet does not mean that you're bad at maths, not at all. It just means that you didn't solve that one problem. You did not know how to solve one problem, and if someone's gonna show you the solution, you're gonna know the next time. So it's not that deep. Academia is hard, so don't measure your worth based on just your one last grade. I think it's helpful to think of this in terms of tracking your progress in terms of how many problems you attempt, not how many you solve, and that mindset can actually make such a big difference. During one particularly brutal Trinity term, my friends and I would meet up in a cafe every Sunday morning, pick one problem each and try to explain it out loud to each other. It was half meds, half therapy session, and honestly, it kept all of us sane. Also, do not underestimate the power of rest. Some of my best insights came after a break, you know, a mid-walk along a river or during a coffee break that turned into a chat about life. Your brain definitely does need these down times to make connections. Here's something a lot of people 
get wrong. University is about much more than the piece of paper at the end. Now, do not get me wrong, yes, you'll come out with a degree, but you'll also come out with resilience, the ability to learn anything really quickly, and hopefully some clarity about what really excites you, what really drives you. And for me, there was mathematics, there was coding, and eventually quant finance. The most important part though, university gives you opportunities. So research them, take them. Even if they don't seem useful at the time, they might shape your path later, and you never know. In my second year, actually, I almost did not apply for an internship because I thought I wasn't ready at all. I ended up getting it, and it became the reason why I fell in love with data and modeling. It was the first time I did it properly in a company setting, which directly led into what I'm doing now. So don't wait until you feel ready. You will never actually do. And yeah, the best opportunities often look really, really intimidating at first. So if you're going to university, so awesome, here's what I want you to remember. Be consistent with your studies, learn to balance freedom with responsibility, Say yes to experiences, but do not compare yourself to anyone else. And above all, enjoy it, because these years really, really do fly by. I went into Oxford expecting to come out with a math degree, and I came out with friendships, memories and lessons that shaped my entire career. And they were, so far, the best four years of my entire life. And if you're heading off to university now, you're about to begin the same journey. And trust me, it is so, so worth it. Good luck this autumn and maybe keep a stash of multivitamins for when your diet inevitably becomes 90% pasta. That's all from me. Hope you have enjoyed this video and that it has given you some useful tips and reassurance for your upcoming studies. Please do give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more content if uh, math, studying and quant finance interest you. And do join my community on Discord if you want to meet like-minded people, really nice people to discuss all of these things with. You have all of my socials down in the description below. I'm definitely a lot more active on Instagram if you want to see me on there. And yeah, have a good one. I will catch you really, really soon. I'm sick of daydreaming. I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline right below your waistline. Want you by my head.